Hey, what's up guys? John here. I'm leaving California next week. Next week, I'm out of here. I was considering to leave a couple months ago, but I decided against it. But I just learned something just absolutely insane today about a partnership between Bill Gates and Gavin Newsom. And what's going to happen to the kids in California going forward is going to be just not possible for me. I have a young child right now. He's 14 months old. I have another child on the way. You guys are the first to hear about it right now. I just found out a couple weeks ago. I'm really excited about it. But there's no way I'm going to allow my children to be influenced in the direction that they're pushing these kids here in California. What's coming next is so shocking. It is ridiculous. I can't believe it. It honestly, it feels like I'm living in some crazy sci-fi movie that this is now the new normal. This is our reality. So for me, I'm planning, investing, and strategizing for my children, my wife, going forward in this new world that we live in. So in this video, I'm going to lay out everything, my investing strategy, as well as why I'm leaving California. So please smash that like button. It does so much for the channel and it tells YouTube to share the content. If they share the content, more people will see it and hopefully make a difference, spread the word, and maybe expose some of this craziness that we're all forced to live with. So please smash that like button. Let's begin. So this just came out last week that Bill Gates and Gavin Newsom have partnered up on this endeavor. And this is something that I will never have my children partake in. I'm not saying that you should, but this for me is just not going to work. Los Angeles School District requires students to use an app to enter campus. The long-awaited move comes as LAUSD is targeting an April 9th reopening of schools. The Los Angeles Unified School District has officially launched Daily Pass, an app designed to coordinate health checks, test scenes for safe reopening of schools. Sort of like the golden ticket in Willy Wonka, everyone with this pass can easily get into school. LAUSD Superintendent Austin Buter said during his weekly update February 22nd, Daily Pass, developed with the support of Microsoft, generates a unique QR code for each student and staff member that authorizes entry to a specific LA unified location for that day as long as the individual receives a negative result. Shows no symptoms and has a temperature under 100 degrees. Upon an individual's arrival to campus, their QR code is scanned by a LA unified school site leader who takes the individual's temperature. So every day they have to get their temperature taken. The daily pass will also be used by LA Unified School based on mission programs to register and schedule appointments, track scenes in stock, perform check-in and data capture at time of appointment. Sort of high-risk individuals offer wait list to low-risk individuals and dashboards to view data among other features. All of this information is shared with the appropriate authorities. Anonymized data from Daily Pass will be used by the LA Unified Research and Healthcare Collaborators, Stanford University, UCLA, John Hopkins University, Anthem Blue Cross, HealthNet, and Cedar Sinai to provide insights for strategies to create the safest possible school environment. So all of your health records will be shared. This could pose a privacy concern. Getting tested every single week, having a young child being tested every single week, covering their faces, really crippling their ability to express themselves and develop human connections and relationships could have long lasting trauma on your child. It seems like the obvious next step is that we'll all need this daily pass app to enter a Whole Foods, a farmer's market, a bar and grill, maybe even a bank, definitely a concert or venue. We'll need this just like the students at school need this. It'll be for everyone's safety, as they say. However, is this something that you wanna live with? In Texas, they're lifting all restrictions. They are lifting mask mandates. Everything is being lifted in Texas. Gavin Newsom is bashing the governor of Texas about how he's handling this being so reckless. The question is, where would you rather live? Where would you rather run a business? Would it be Texas or California? I believe California is losing its authority all because of Gavin Newsom and the way that they're handling this entire situation. I foresee much trauma coming to landlords in California because the state cannot afford to take care of all of these tenants 
due to the eviction moratorium that has been pushed out for over a year so far. And that number is only going to continue to snowball every single day. More people step into hardship. But how can the state of California take care of all these tenants? Simple. They can't. What are they going to do? Push off the responsibility into property owners. These property owners are sitting in sky high mortgages and they themselves are struggling. So what's going to happen? There is going to be a avalanche of foreclosures and California right now signed SB 1079 into law stating that they have first right of refusal to buy all foreclosures. So what does this mean? That they're incentivized to really stick it to the landlord. So big, big trauma coming for landlords. So with that said, this is what my plan is. So me as a real estate investor, I loved California for many reasons. The first was high property appreciation. If you knew what to buy, how to buy and where to buy, you would make a killing. The second, sky high rents. On an average year, we would have a 5%, 8% or even 10 plus percent increases on rent. So it was always a good year to be a landlord until 2020 hit. Rent reductions have been 40% so far in many areas of California. I believe that number is only just beginning to fall. And I think we'll see another 10, 20, 30, 40% from here going forward under these crazy new progressive policies that are sweeping California as well as new tax regulations under Biden. It's going to be a very difficult place to live. And then you take into consideration that lumber cost, which is a fifth of overall construction cost, has increased by 100%, 100% just this year alone. So if lumber costs are fifth of construction, that increased 100% and rents are plummeting, how do you have a profitable outcome with real estate in California? That is the million dollar question. And that's why, well, that's one of the reasons why I'm gonna be leaving California. So here's my investing strategy for 2021 and 2022. Did you know $300 billion is sitting right now on the sidelines with private equity companies waiting to pounce on distressed real estate? They see the forbearances, 2.7 million homes in forbearance, the eviction moratoriums expiring with one in five renters not paying rent. They know landlords are in deep distress and they are waiting like alligators in a riverbed for that opportunity. And so my strategy as a real estate investor, I'm going to be moving to New Jersey, which is a high tax state. And it's very, you know, the policy is very similar to California. But the difference here is that I'm going to be buying properties with a significant discount to replacement value, which means that if the land were 10,000 and it cost 200 bucks a foot to build, which would equate to a 2,000 square foot property at $400,000 plus the land value to build, what that would cost me would probably be about 35 to $50,000. So I'm getting it for about 80 to 90 cents on the dollar. And I can section eight rent these properties for between 1100 and $1,400 per month. If you factor in the property taxes about $300 per month, leaves me a net profit of about $1,000 per month, which is significant about $12,000 per year. And inside four years, I'll receive my entire investment back. I already have a team in place in New Jersey and have a lot of experience there. So this for me makes the most sense. My goal is to have 55 properties there by the end of the year. And at the end, I'm gonna receive a portfolio loan. I'm gonna take a loan out against the entire portfolio. The end of 2022, I wanna have between 150 and 200 homes in New Jersey, mainly paid off with very, very light debt on these portfolio loans. And my goal for the end of 2021 is to break in to Florida. I wanna be a real estate investor in Florida, buying distressed multifamily properties and or hotels, mom and pop hotels, and repurposing these hotels and offering affordable housing with you know kitchenettes in the rooms, just like a traditional hotel, but offer it at a rate that's affordable for people. Because I believe we're gonna be stepping into an affordability crisis. There's no question about it. As people just begin losing their jobs, the eviction moratoriums expire, forbearances expire, people are going to need a really affordable place to live. So where are they going to go? They're going to leave their A and B level apartments, these really nice luxury buildings, go somewhere they can afford. So for me, going into these communities, buying these distressed properties, renovating them for pennies on the dollar, and 
turning them over to a more stable tenant that can support the debt load on the building makes a lot of sense. I believe the right approach is to be very conservative with debt going forward, not 70, 80% loan to value. If I did that now, I'd be sweating bullets. I mean, 40, 50% debt at a maximum and being very smart, forward thinking. That's going to be a really important trait for a successful investor. Many investors are to the neck in debt right now, and they're not going to be able to withstand the vacancy that's coming, the rent reductions that continue to follow, and the operating costs that are just going to continue just increasing and increasing and increasing when things get really, really tough. When these eviction moratoriums expire and the forbearance expires, what's going to happen? Things are going to get nasty. But in these nasty times is when fortunes can be made. I've been in real estate for a decade and I have many investors that would love to invest with me, past clients of mine. I was a real estate agent in Beverly Hills. I have many clients that are worth a lot of money that really trust me. And I've turned down the request to invest in the past simply because things look very uncertain right now. But when things become a bit more clear, I'll be picking up the phone, I'll be calling them, and we'll be closing on a lot of big deals throughout Florida. But right now, I'm gonna take the low hanging fruit, which is New Jersey, and then I'm gonna scale from there. So please smash that like button. Please smash the like button. Help me expose what's happening in California. Drop your comments below. I'm really curious what you think of my overall investing strategy. And consider subscribing for more on personal finance, real estate, business, and money. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video.